Okay, welcome everybody. We're um, coming to you from St. John the Baptist Greek Orthodox Church in Beaverton, Oregon. And uh, the plan today is to read a Christmas story. And we're gonna be doing this every day of the Nativity Fast and actually through New Year's, except for New, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas itself. So um, I wanna welcome you and also invite you that if you'd like to sign up to do this, I'm gonna have the link below in the description about how you can sign up to read a Christmas story to our St. John community. But today for our very first day, um, we have Sarah here reading. Thank, welcome, Sarah. Hi. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, thanks for being our first reader. We're really excited to do this. And it's such an awesome opportunity to get to know our fellow parishioners and also to like share a little bit of our joy of this, this holiday season. So first, I just want to ask you, you can tell everybody like how long you've been at St. John the Baptist. Um, well, my family's been attending for six years, and then we've been baptized slash chrismated into the church for five. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I mean, it's so awesome having your family, your whole family with us. And um, I, I'm really excited. Um, we've had you read aloud for a couple of other activities, and you're, you're, um, you have a fan base. <laughs> So, so I know you do this for homeschooling, so we're really excited to have that. And can you tell us um, about any like special holiday traditions that you have in your family? Yeah, so um, in my family, even before we were practicing orthodoxy, we've always done um, Advent calendars, which is a lot of fun. And the great thing about being Orthodox is now it lasts for 40 days instead of just 25. So I'm like, yay, I could add in extra days of Advent calendar and all that. So um, I, we were going to share about... Um, the Welcoming the Christ Child's um, Advent calendar. But before that, I also wanted to share another tradition with you guys. When we read aloud for our homeschool, we always um, start off with some poetry just because it nourishes our souls. Um, and so I've been collecting over the years special Christmas poetry because why not? It's, it's awesome and it's so fun. And I just love celebrating the, the season as long as I possibly can. So today um, I found this poem that I've loved for years and I read through it last night and I was just like, wow, this feels even more relevant than ever. Even though it was written almost 200 years ago, it's like, this could be the Christmas poem for 2020. It's, it's really great. Um, it's called In Memoriam and it's by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light, the year is dying in the night, Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new. Ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind for those that here we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor. Ring in redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause in ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life with sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin, the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes, but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right. Ring in the common love of good. Ring out old shapes of foul disease. Ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free, the larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. So that's one of my favorite Christmas poems. So I wanted to start off with that and share with everyone. Um, not typically what you would hear either. So I hope I uh, challenged a few of you out there and, and shared something new that you hadn't heard before. Yes, thank you, that was beautiful. Um, so if it's all right with you guys, we thought we would uh, kick off this these readings with um, 
by reading from Welcoming the Christ Child. I know a lot of you have this at home, but we thought we would give everyone a head start because it's kind of rough getting started into the nativity season. So we'll give you a head start by reading the first two. So we're going to read yesterday's reading and today's reading. That way everybody can get caught up. Nobody's behind. All right. So reading number one is God creates the world. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Darkness covered everything, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He called the light day and the darkness night, and that was the first day. Then God created heaven and saw that it was good, and that was the second day. Then God gathered the waters into seas and let the dry land appear between them. God said, let the earth bring forth grasses and trees that bear fruit. And it was so. God saw that it was good, and that was the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the sky to divide day from night. It was so. Then God made the sun and the moon and the stars also. And God saw that it was good, and that was the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters bring forth living creatures and let birds fly across the sky. It was so. God saw that it was good, and he blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on earth. And that was the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures, those with four legs and the creeping things and the wild animals of the earth. It was so. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So God made man in the image of God. <clears throat> Male and female, he made them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of heaven and over every living thing that moves on the earth. It was so. Then God saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good. <clears throat> so evening and morning were the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth and all their adornment were finished. And on the seventh day, God finished the works he made and he rested. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that was the day of rest. All right, now there's a little question and answer after each section. So I'll go ahead and read that for you guys. Question, every single day, God sees that his creation is good. Why does God want us to remember that everything he created was good? Which part of creation was very good? Answer, God did not create evil things. He wants us to know that everything started out good. He also teaches us that human beings are very good. Okay, next question. When God makes people at creation, he says that they are very good. Are all people good? Answer. All of creation is inherently good because God gives people free will. They may choose not to remain good, but they all begin very good. Question. God made people in our image. Why does he say our image instead of my image? Answer, God is speaking in the plural, more than one, our, because he is a community of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity exists before all time. It always was, it is, and it ever shall be. Question, what does it mean to be made in God's image? How has God made you to be like him? Answer, because we are made in God's image, we are like him in many wonderful ways. We are capable of great love and of goodness. We are creative and free. God gives us dominion over his creation, making us stewards of the earth. All right, and here is our final discussion idea. If we read very closely, we can see that God is the Holy Trinity, even before time is created. In the creation, first the Father speaks, let there be. And then the word of God or the son makes it happen. It was so. And then the spirit moves, bringing life to the new creation. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, work together to produce all of creation out of nothing in the vast, empty darkness. All right. And then reading number two is God creates people, which there's this beautiful illustration I don't want you guys to miss out on. This book is just gorgeous. If you haven't gotten it, it's so worth it. All right, so our reading for today, God creates people. God formed man out of dust from the ground, and he breathed in his face the breath of life, and man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, and with every beautiful tree good for food to grow from the ground. 
Also, in the middle of the garden, there were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of learning the knowledge of good and evil. Then the Lord God took the man he formed and put him in the garden to tend it and keep it. He explained to him, you may eat food from every tree in the garden, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat. For in whatever day you eat from it, you shall die by death. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is like him. God gave Adam the job of naming all the animals of the field and all the birds of heaven, but none of them was a helper who was really like Adam. Then, while Adam was sleeping, God took one of his ribs and built it into a woman and brought her to him. So Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Finally, Adam had a helper who was like him. Adam and Eve lived happily in the garden God had created for them, never suffering or struggling. There was no hunger or pain, nor sickness or death. In that perfect place, God was there with them, walking and talking with them. All right, so that was the reading, and now we'll do the few questions. Question, what was it like in the garden? Life in the garden was very pleasant. There was no suffering or struggle or fighting. Question, why did God let Adam name all the creatures? Answer, God gave Adam dominion over all of his creation. Adam was the caretaker of the garden, so he had the honor of naming everything, but he also had the responsibility of watching over everything. Question, why did Adam need a helper who was like him? Answer, Adam needs someone who is like him, made of the same flesh and bone, to be company and help for him in the garden. Right, and now here's our advanced discussion idea. Why would Adam need company? Because he was made in the image of God and God is love. God is a community of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Adam is created in God's image. So Adam is also created to be part of a community of love. How exactly did God make man? He formed him out of the dust of the ground and breathed life into him. St. Irenaeus compares this to the story of Christ healing the man born blind in John chapter 9. Jesus reminds us that he is the light of the world, and then he spat on the ground and made clay, then picked it up and anointed the eyes of the man with the clay, just as he formed man from clay. All right, and that is the end of our reading for today. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. That was amazing. I'm really glad that you challenged us with a poem because I think we often forget um, about that, you know, there's so much beautiful um, Christmas poems. Actually, are, there's a huge tradition of Chris, Christmas poetry. So I'm excited to see who takes up the challenge there to find some Christmas poems and reads them to us. Um, Another great source for um, poems is even just reading the Christmas carols, if anybody's interested. If you just read it aloud, it's actually fantastic poetry. And I, uh, I think it'd be lovely to hear everyone's favorites that way too. Just an idea. That's true. And they have so many more verses than we usually hear, especially in a recording. So it's fun to kind of dig deeper into all those verses. That's true. So, and with what you just read, um, I know that I, I bought the, the ornament set that goes with it. It comes in a little tin. Um, and for the first two days, so the, the picture for the first day is this one. And then for the second day, this one. Oops try to get it so it's not reflecting and I'm going to be putting them up um I have this little line with clothespins I'm going to be pinning them up each day so that's kind of the way that I'm doing it but you have something else to show us because there's other ways to do a Jesse tree or an advent calendar and I want to share some of those absolutely one of the new ones that we have found um is this one from uh draw near designs so this is the small one um, but the large one actually fits, the ornaments will fit into the pocket and it comes with a little stick and a star and then you just move it every day so you can um, keep track of where you are on the calendar. Um, That's awesome. Just, it's, really, it's a really fun way to, to keep track and have that visual up and how close are we to Christmas and so you can always look and see. Right. And I love that every single day on that calendar seems to have some kind of illustration. So I'm going to go ahead and share the link. I'll, I'll share that again as a link below, but right now I'll show you a couple of things. So starting, we'll start with 
this is the website draw near designs that Sarah mentioned and um, the so so it yourself kit they are uh, sold out for right now of the ones that are pre sewn so you can get a kit with all of the pieces and then you can sew it. Um, and I'll put that link below. And then the other thing we wanted to show you, um, this came out on the blog of um, Korea Destiny for Aesthetic Life of Motherhood. I think yesterday she posted an advent guide for families with a ton of beautiful resources about having an advent wreath and some um, pictures to show how different families do that. And then talking about the Jesse tree and what we were just discussing and Again, I love all the examples because it gives you um, some ideas to spark your own creativity. There's um, the Draw Your Designs calendar, but there are also different ones that you can get to mark the days. And then she highlights some of the feast days during Nativity Fast, that beautiful tradition of lighting a candle each week. So, and talking about menu planning as well. So I will link that. And then um, a final thing that I wanted to show is this came today on another um, a book blog, Modern Mrs. Darcy posted this idea, which really correlates well with what we're doing. And it's um, in her family, and she describes it here, is that they will wrap up Christmas books. Um, they'll wrap up 25 Christmas books in their case, but we can go 40 or whatever. Um, and um, she she has them in a pile. And so every day, one member of the family gets to choose a book to open. Now they're not new books. Like a lot of them are ones they've had for years as a family. Or she said, if you're still building up your collection, you can even wrap some library books in there. <laughs> so, but it's a, it's a way that they um, kind of greet the Christmas season by reading a new book each, each day and they take turns um, choosing. And then she has a list of family favorites of some of the Christmas books that they love. Um, picture books too. So I'll link that as well. So um, that's it for our first day of our 40 Chris Christmas stories. Um, we're going to be doing this every weekday at 11 a.m. And I'm also going to put the link in for how to sign up. You don't um, have to get an email or anything. There's a link just to a Google form where you can share what your availability is and what you want to read. And um, children are welcome to read too with the uh, supervision of an adult. They might need some help um, managing the Zoom and everything, but we would love to have as many people as would like to, to come and share a favorite Christmas story. So thank you, Sarah. All right, see you guys tomorrow.